Hey everyone, this is Chapter One here again with another Roblox description tutorial. Uh, today I will be showing you guys how to use uh, tables, and I'll also show you guys how to use pathfinding service. So, uh, first let's go into Roblox Studio, and then we'll uh, put a script in the workspace and go ahead and open it. So, first I'm going to explain what tables are, because you need to know how to use these in order to use uh, pathfinding service. So, a table is uh, basically just a list. It is a list of of values. It can be anything you want, and they can be used for a lot of things. It can be used uh, to group a bunch of data together into one variable if you want. It can kind of be like it can kind of compress things, sort of like if you're uh, saving data, which we can go into in a later tutorial. Um, it can store like a list of positions, which is what we're going to use, uh, which is what we're going to do with pathfinding service. So let's get into it. So first, I'm going to show you guys how to create a table. So to do that, first you need to store it as a variable. So we're just going to do it as my table equals, and then you need to do uh, these two curly brackets, curly braces, I guess you could call them. So what you need to do is for you need to put in a value so let's just do a list of numbers or actually see the list of strings so let's do the first one is hello and then since we have one va one value down to go on to the next one we need to put a comma that shows that we're done with that first value then for the second one we can type in something else we can do uh, how I remember that one, another, another comma, and then uh, more quotation marks. So I'm going to say, are you doing? So we have five values in here. So now let's make it so we can, so we're going to print all those values out separately. So the way you can do this is we, we can do print. And then we need to reference what value we're going to do. And so it's numbered in Lua from 1 to however many you have. So we're going to do print my table. And then let's go ahead and pr uh, play and see what it does. So as you can see in the output, In the output, it says table 1C409D78. That's nothing that we can use or that we want to use right now. That's just kind of like machine code for saying that it's a Lua table. So to print out what this value actually is, we need to put it into regular brackets like this. Type in the value that we want. So we'll type in 1. So this will print out the first value in this table or this list. And so that should print out hello. See? In the output it says hello. Let's go ahead and stop. So now we can print out a bunch of st a bunch of stuff here. So to make this easier, we're going to put it into a for loop. So four x equals one, and then there's there's five values in that table. So five do, and then we're gonna print my table x. So what this does is, uh, so this is this is a loop. Every time the it passes an iteration, the x increments by one. So first it starts at 1 because that's the starting value we have right here. And every time it goes through this right here, it's going to increment. And so that means that x is going to, the value is going to go up by 1. So at first x is going to equal 1. And then after it does this one time, it's going to equal 2. So then it's going to print the first value and then the second value, the third one, fourth, and the fifth. And then it should print out this whole sentence. Let's press run. And then here in the output, it says, hello, how are you doing? So that's the basics of tables. Um, 
you can add tons of different stuff. It doesn't have to be strings. You can add in like parts in there or any other kind of instance. You can store brick colors, vector three values, numbers. Uh, see what else is there. You can store enums in there. There's tons of things that you can store in there. Even either you can store C frames. Uh, yeah, the list is endless. Pretty, you can store pretty much everything uh, in there. So now that we know how to use the basics of tables, we're going to go on to this, um, we're going to go on to pathfinding service. So what pathfinding service does is it takes two points, the destination point and the end point. And then what it does is that it finds it calculates a path between those two points that is not obscured by any object. So basically what that means is let's say I have a start point right here. We're going to make this one anchored. We're going to make it green. And we're going to name it start. And then let's make another one. We're going to name it end. We're going to make this red. So what we're going to do with, with pathfinding service is we're going to calculate a a path between these two points that something can move to and so what's so good about this is it'll calculate a path even around objects that are in the way so let's make another uh, part that's anchored and let's make it big so what what pathfinding service will do is it'll find a path that'll go around this block right here that's what's so great about it so let's go I opened up the API for pathfinding service in the in Google and so here is the description I use use to calculate use to calculate a path between two points in the game world so th the property of it is empty cutoff which is it's it tells the service how small the pa the smallest the part can be for it to be considered in its calculation and there's two yield functions. One of them is compute raw path async, and the second one is compute smooth path a async. They have they both have the same uh, parameters. We want to use smooth path async because it'll make the smoothest path. So it has the start, finish, and max distance. So start and finish are both vector th three values, and the second one is max distance. That is the maximum distance that the thing can be away from the start point. Uh, you can make this as big as you want, but Roblox has a limit of 512 studs, so that's what we're going to use for that. So first, let's get the service. Uh, let's see, let's do path equals let's do path service actually equals game get service. Alright, so now what we're going to do is, so what this function does right here, it returns a path, but this path is actually in a table. It is a table of vector three, p vector three values or positions that this stuff is going to move to. So what we're going to do is path equals path service compute smooth path async so we need to type in the the first parameter is the start of position so that's going to be workspace dot start dot position and the second one is the end so workspace dot end dot position and then the maximum distance that the path can be or the maximum length it can be we're going to have 512 which is the highest it can go so this is going to return a a table of positions so now what we're going to do is we're going to do 4x equals 1 number path do so what this is that I created a, a for loop that starts at 1 and it goes through the number of uh, the number of values that 
this table has because this creates this returns a table that we can use and so when you put this number this hashtag in front of a table what it's going to do is it's going to return the number of values that it has in that table so so this is going to repeat this for loop is going to repeat the number of values that are in that table so what we're going to do is uh let's see local position or actually we do pos equals uh pass x so we're referencing that the number value that's inside of that table right there and so what we're going to do is we're going to make a part instance dot new part workspace and then we're going to make it anchored so p dot anchored equals true and p dot size vector three dot new one 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 and then p dot position equals pos and to make sure that it doesn't lag much or anything we're going to put a weight in there 0 0.01 so that should make the path let's press run to see what it does Oops. let's see so it says attempt to get length of global path the user data value so let's see what it did wrong there oh yeah that's right I forgot so we're gonna so what this says is ret it returns a path and but that's not directly um, it, it is not directly a table of positions we have to do one more thing first so let's see we're gonna do smooth pass and we're gonna do pass equals smooth pass get point coordinates there we go so what this does so this function returns a pass and so th what this does is it gets that path and it gets and this function right here get point coordinates returns the the table it returns a table of all the point of all the positions that we need so now this should work correctly press run see it creates a bunch of these parts as you see it goes around this part and it gets right to the end point and so we can move this around too and it'll change its path it, it just calculates the shortest path between the two distances. See? You know, all the way from there to there. And we can make like a little maze too if we want. Let's do that. Right there. There. Now let's see what it does now. No, oh, I went all the way around it. <laughs> Oops. All right. So, like, if we make it a bit longer, it'll it's gonna go through the two of those bricks. Sorry, it's so laggy. I don't know what's going on with the computer. Never did this before. I'll try to figure it out. So there it went. See. And you could do this with uh. You could do this with a humanoid too. Like like say you're making like a zombie or something, and you want it to to get to a certain position, you could using the humanoid. You can use a move to function. It'll move to that position, and stuff like that. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you did find it helpful, please uh, thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, please tell your friends about about this channel and the tutorials on it if they want to learn how to script. I will post some more I'll post some more videos on this channel soon and uh I will see you guys later.